All right, fellas, go ahead and turn to the other side of the NBA with a look at the Western Conference. Los Angeles Clippers took a 2-1 lead on Monday thanks to solid defense down the stretch late. Kawhi Leonard took off his Game 2 slump, turned in a 23-point, 14-rebound performance with a critical block against Murray at the rim. Nuggets are still struggling with defense and getting not a lot out of guys uh, besides Jokic and Murray. So, Jay, any adjustment the Nuggets can make to avoid letting the series get away? Oh, uh, hmm. I hate to be repetitive as I was in the first in the first block, but um, nope, not a whole lot they can do. That's good tough questions uh, here. I'm trying. Listen, yeah, yeah, real thought provoking today. Listen, I mean, Paul George, if he's going to put up 32 points on 12 for 18 and five for seven from three, I mean, it's not only a wrap for the Nuggets; it's a wrap for the whole league. I mean, this guy actually figures out how to get some consistent, um, you know, one B Robin action to Kawhi's Batman. I, I think it's over for the whole league, much less the Nuggets, but. The Clippers, it's just a matter of consistency for me, as it has been much of the season. Um, when Paul George plays like this, I think they're almost impossible to beat. When he doesn't play like this, I mean, sometimes they can be had, and sometimes you can see that their defense is kind of an off-and-on switch. Like, in game, in game two, they weren't all that great defensively. I don't think they were all that great on defense in game three, but in the fourth quarter, they held the Nuggets to 19 points. So, you see, they have a little better off-and-on switch. I think they know – they're one of those teams that they really know how talented they are. And sometimes I think they get caught up in, oh, I don't, we don't have to play hard tonight. We just come in here and walk all over them. And they get caught. But then when it, you see in the key moments, like after the series um, against Dallas, it was tied to, to all. They come out in game five and game six. They take care of business. It's the same thing they're doing right now in game three. They came out in game one. They dominated them. They took their foot off the gas in game two. And then last night, the, the Nuggets made it. The, the Nuggets put up a good fight, but in the fourth quarter, the Clippers took control. And this this series is all predicated on on the Clippers and what how much they want to. I don't know. Maybe they, maybe they like playing extra games. That that could. I don't know. But I mean, Denver's Denver's just not very good on defense. That that is not going to change. And we saw it. Utah to me. I didn't look at Utah as an offensive juggernaut until they started showing up against Denver. And Denver looking – they making Donovan Mitchell look like the second coming of Michael Jordan. Just, it's just ridiculous some of the things they will let, let happen. And then if you couldn't handle Donovan Mitchell, I told you, you weren't going to be able to handle Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. And, I mean, that's just kind of where we're at. And then you talk about, you know, Jokic had a very nice game last night. But, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're, you're uh, number two option or number one, depending on how you look at it, Jamal Murray wasn't very good. They did get a little bit of a boost from Michael Porter last night. But Gary Harris, to me, he's still not himself. Uh, Paul Millsap, the clock's ticking on him. I don't see much I don't see much left in the tank there. And as much as we like Denver and we respect them offensively, after you get past Murray and uh, Jokic, if it's not going to be Porter, they just simply don't have all that much left. Clippers are going to win this series. It's just all predicated on how, how soon they want to get, get it over with. <clears throat> uh, Coda, if you don't mind, could you repeat that line you said about Kawhi Leonard right quick in the, in the lead-in? Um, he, had, he had a rough game, too. A uh, bit of a slump is what I called it. And then shook you, it you off said he, game three. He, he, he shook it off. All right. So he scored. Because th this is the crap right here, right? I was listening to Undisputed, and Shannon Sharp was making a very good point. You know, Uncle Shay Shay. You know, shouts out to what they're doing over there at Fox Sports 1. But here's the deal. 23 points. He played 42 minutes. Keep in mind, 42 minutes. Nine for 19. One for six from the three-point line. Oh, he did have 14 rebounds. Six, six, and two blocks. He's a plus 10, so I get, his plus minus was good. I get mad at this because if, I guarantee you, if this was LeBron James' stat line, It'd be like, hey, man, you got to show up, bro. What is this? You got to show This is bull crap. You got to show up. Only difference is if LeBron would have came with this, they might have probably lost unless Anthony Davis just went out of his mind. But the Clippers won, so people tend to like, oh, yeah, yeah, Kawhi, bounce back game. It's not a bounce back game. They just won. Paul George, if you were to call that a bounce back, that's a bounce. Hey, 12 for 18? Sign me up. Seven from uh, five from seven from the three point line. Sign me up. Oh, by the way, he only shot three. 
free throws and he made all three. So he scored 32 points without making frequent um, occurring frequent flaw miles to the free throw line. <laughs> Can I interest you in that? That so I'm um, either way, I had to go and throw that little rant out. Now, to get to to get to your question. Yeah, yeah, this one, uh, let, let's just say, uh, listen, you can't have too many games with Murray coming up with 14. That's just not going to cut it. Honestly, I'm going to be blatantly honest. You're not going to beat the – the Nuggets is not going to win another game in this uh, round against the Clippers if Jokic is the leading scorer. I'm tell you that right now. You're not going to win another game. You need Murray to be the leading scorer. Now, you might be saying, hey, Drink, what are you talking about? That don't even make sense. They can win a game with Jokic. Yeah, they probably could. But that means Murray did absolutely nothing. And if Murray does absolutely nothing, you get the same result you already got, a fat L. Here's the deal. You need Murray to be scoring, and you need Jokic to do everything else. That is the winning brand. of the, Like, what I did, like, the reason I got a little bit of, um, you know, encouragement out of the Nuggets was because I, I felt like the Clippers was the better team. They played with, they played up to the standard of the Clippers until the fourth quarter, and then the Clippers showed us why they're the favorite to win the championship, right, in most people's opinion. But I felt like Denver was playing a good game. But then you got Murray out here with four. What are we doing here? I, I need the I need the Utah series Murray to come on with it. Not not this dude. I need that fifty. I'm going to the hotel to eat that free buffet and then come back and drop another fifty. That's what I need. Yeah, I don't. I can't. Fourteen points. That's not gonna get it done. And I feel like that was the biggest thing. Um, cause listen, you only got twelve out of Morris. But we know what he there for. He that's the goon. Now that that's the goon for the Clippers right there. We know what he there for. Just ask Luca. And then you know you get ten out of you get ten out of Williams, eleven out, uh, 11 out of Harold. So if you can just get that second guy for Denver, you can make it a game. We seen game two. We seen if you can get this game into the fourth quarter and apply pressure. Oh yeah, and don't even get me talking about the fourth quarter numbers of Kawhi Leonard, Mister One for Ten. But that you never that's neither here nor there in the last two games. So um, yeah, that's right. I threw that number out there. Um, so if you can get that second guy, Murray, to, to show up, you have a chance. Now to, to Jay's point about the defense, he ain't he ain't lying. Let, let's be real here. The the best defender on this team is Gary Harrison, and he on the play like what, six, seven games pretty much in the, the whole playoff series because he didn't play in the first few games of the first round. So he's still trying to get back into the rhythm of the game, and that's their best defender. And I don't think he's good enough to go on Paul George or Kawhi Little. Or, you know, <laughs> he ain't. He might not even be good enough to go on Lou Williams. I don't know. I was, I was told uh, – I was also told Torrey Craig was a really good defender. I think Donovan Mitchell, like, just – burned his defensive credentials in that first round series. Listen, them cut scenes that they do in, the, in in games, you know how they they go back and they show you like a cut scene. Every cut scene I seen a Torian Craig, he doing this number. <laughs> how you play it nowadays? That's, that's what everybody does. Listen. Yo, yeah. If you, you know, LeBron James or Kawhi Leonard, yeah, flare your arms out. You yo, yo just do what you got to do to try to get a call later. Hey, Craig, what are you doing? You might want to get out here and earn your paycheck. What are you doing? So with, with all that said, uh, I do think it's an adjustment they can make. If you make Murray the primary score and you can get what you get out of Jokic, like you get on a normal game basis, I think they can make this, this series competitive. The Clippers are going to win the series. <laughs> Let's not get it twisted here. But I do think they're, they're more competitive, I think, with the Clippers, then I think Toronto is with Boston. Because I think, me personally, I didn't see Toronto tap out that potential and barely win. In game three of their series, they had tapped out their potential pretty much. And they needed a, a buzzer beater to win the game. Whereas when the Nuggets play right, I thought, 
they made themselves competitive in game two and they won game two. So yeah, I, I do think it's adjustments. Those are my adjustments and that's where I stand with that series. Yeah, I mean, real quick, I think the biggest thing with – what I was talking about with Leonard is he was dreadful in game two. I mean, he was 4-17, he had 13 points, uh, he had four turnovers. I mean, it was it was a rough night, not only on offense, but uh, Jamal Murray actually got going. And he's mostly – you know, Kawhi spent a lot of time guarding him in this series. Murray had 27 points. He didn't shoot great, you know, 10-21, to 21, but, you know, made the shots when it mattered. But I, I think the thing is, like, unless Kawhi just forgets to plug himself in another night, like – I don't, I don't see, like, is, if he doesn't play like that, then I don't see how the Nuggets are going to do what you just said because if Kawhi is mostly staying with Jamal Murray, he ain't going to score 50 any given night. I don't care what happens. Like, that's just not happening. So, I, I think uh, if you look past that, I mean, you go, well, who else is going to step up on this Robbie I mean, Michael Porter Jr., he had a night. He had an okay night last night. But, I mean, you're going to need that bubble dude you had a couple weeks ago to, to have any substantial chance. And I think, like you said, Jay, the biggest thing with the Clippers is it's just a matter of effort. You know, they, they flip the switch on, they flip it off for a game, they, they mess around in game two, they flip it back on game three with about the fourth quarter, they start doing the little things right, they clean out the series. And I think the biggest thing for Denver is another problem this team has is they're just a little too young, they're a little too kind of not tested enough in the playoffs yet. And I think that's coming back to Yo, bite them when it, well, we like, in late in these games, you know, when it matters wait. the most. Hold on, Cody. Yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on. We've been hearing that crap for like the last three years. Yeah, They're but, young. Listen, They're not experienced. They just played a seven game. Do you know the last three series the Nuggets been in, all three series went seven games? I ain't trying to hear that. I no, no. Right. Well, this one not. That's why I said the last three up to this. But <laughs> well, this will play like it, man. <laughs> <six years laughs> so, uh. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm not coming at you. It's just mm-hmm. like I hear that a lot. I hear the yeah. the, the, the the mainstream guys, they're saying, yeah, they're young and innocent. Well, when do you grow up? If this was football, they'd be cut already. Like, we don't got time for this. We don't have time for this. Yo, if you was just in the Western Conference Finals, you didn't grow up there? You, you didn't get – you didn't learn something in, in game seven at home against the Portland Trail. You didn't learn something? Like, come on, man. It, that excuse got to go. They just got to play better. And and this bull crap, Mike Malone got to motivate them to play. Like, come on, man. Like, come on. Knock it off. Knock it off. All right, we got to get over to the Rockets and the Lakers. We got a lot more to get to tonight. So, uh, after an emphatic game one win by Houston, they did let game two slip away. Anthony Davis and LeBron James dominated uh, two nights ago. Uh, Russell Westbrook has also struggled to assert himself in the series, and Houston is going to have to make some adjustments pretty quick to get him back in it. Uh, Los Angeles did find the formula in game two, obviously, and tonight we're going to find out if they can repeat a drink. So, can they do that, or is Houston going to take game three? No, no, the Lakers will win game three. Um, Here's the deal. Like, I think we, we all become prisoners of the moment sometimes when we watch these games and we, we, we kind of, you know, oh, that's it, it's over. Look, LeBron has took this approach. First of all, this is year 2020, COVID, the messed up everything. This playoff is inside a bubble. So if it was ever a time that you could experiment and get away with stuff, we say this all the time, this would be the year. So LeBron always look at these game ones in these series like, okay, we go down game one. But if we win two, three, four, and five, who cares? That's exactly what happened last series. They lost the first game, and it was a, oh, Portland. Yo, I told you these boys weren't ready. And then yep. two, three, four, and five happened, and all mm-hmm. right, Portland, catch you later, boys. So I, I'm not um, – I, I do I, – the Lakers going to win. Will Houston probably look better? Yeah, they do need more out of Russell Westbrook. Uh, Russell Westbrook, I'm sorry. They need more out of him, but I don't think it matters. I mean – until you show me somebody that can stop Anthony Davis consistently, like, or stop LeBron when he's really aggressive. Like, I, I want people to understand this. LeBron hasn't really looked like the playoff LeBron that we used to. Like, he hasn't been – give me the game where he just was like, oh, you like, oh, this is LeBron. He is really aggressive. He's just – he kind of, like, panders around and – AD kind of takes it over, and then LeBron does something every now and then, and he might close the game. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm saying, like, he's very valuable to the team, but I haven't seen a, you know, 2018 version of LeBron. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to take this game over. So, 
that that lets me know that if he really wanted to, he could take a series over, and it's really nothing they could do about it. Or he just like playing through his young superstar, you know, teammate Anthony Davis. And who is gonna stop Anthony Davis? Nobody. Why? This is why I don't know why Anthony Davis ain't out here averaging fifty. Cause they legitimately don't. PJ Tucker, man, stop, man, stop. He did it game <laughs> one. <laughs> Yeah, and that's, that's what I mean. It was seven more because, times, yeah, four more times, and, I guess. Yeah. And that and that's what I mean, because I just feel like the Lakers take a very lethargic like approach to game one. Let's see what the Rockets got. Let's see what they throw down. You see, all they had to do was switch the lineup. Hey Javel, get up out of here. Hey Howard, you ain't playing in this series. Get up out of here. And they input it um Morris as the five. Oh, that's all it took. Light switch. All right, boys, let's wrap this one up. And so that's why I think the series is over. Um, but I would give Houston this, and I would tell you, I would say this for James Harden and Russell Westbrook. Is you're gonna get beat up when you lose this series. People are gonna say stuff. But the least you can do is give yourself a dog fight. You know, like and actually, you know, play up to the snuff of of, of the playoffs. But I feel bad for them two in the offseason. There's um, they're about to eat them up, and it's not even their fault. And you know, D and Tony got to be out of here at this point. Uh, I'm t- he over here talking about, oh, where well, the Lakers got scared. That's why they made adjustments. No, they made adjustments because they're professionals. Like, what are you talking about? They're scared. Oh, we got them scared, so they adjusted. Oh, uh, okay. I guess you don't make adjustments in the playoffs. No wonder you Antonio. don't win much. No wonder you you are who you are. So, um, with that said, yeah, man, I, I think this series is um, – I think the Lakers are going to roll and going to close this one out here soon. I got it. Oh, I don't even know what the question was at this point. Oh, does Houston get back on top? Houston does not get back on, on top. The Lakers will – I still think this series go long. I still think this, go, this series goes seven games. It's such an interesting – um, contrast and styles, and we talked about this like right. We we got to see these teams pretty early on, right after the Clint Capella trade, and um, I think what happened in Game Two is what the Lakers should have done sooner, and maybe they should have just rolled that in Game One. There comes a point where you have to recognize that you ha- you have to downsize somewhat to give yourselves a chance on the defensive end, especially if guys like Jabale McGee and Dwight Howard aren't having an impact on the other side in terms of offensive rebounding. Um, so I like what Frank Vogel did. I, t- I told you this um, last night, I believe. McGee got eight minutes. Howard got zero minutes. Put AD at the five. Put, let Markeith Morris uh, play a lot more. And he, he, helped, he helped out tremendously in that first quarter, pop, coming out and hitting four three-point shots. Uh, I did not see that coming. It's been a while since I've seen him make two straight threes in a game. He was red hot early. That was a great benefit to them. But um, LeBron and AD, when they are both great, the Lakers are tough to beat, similar with the Los Angeles Clippers. When Kawhi and PG-13 are great, they're tough to beat. They also got contributions from, from the bench. I mean, who would have thought? You got Kuzma out there also giving you good minutes. He was six for seven. And boy, oh, boy, playoff Rondo, playoff Rondo. was a thing. Playoff, oh, playoff Rondo. Rondo. Think about this. Um, I like to look at plus minus every now and again. Would you – would you be interested in taking a wager on who the best plus minus was in the entire game? It was Rondo. I'll just, I'll just fill in the blank for you. Rajon Rondo was a grand total of a plus 28 in 29 minutes, 10 points, nine assists, five steals, uh, four for nine. You know, he was a big reason that Marquise Morris was doing what he was doing early on, putting him in right spots, giving him the ball in the shooting pocket. And that's kind of what it, what it happens. And it's a great thing. The Lakers sorely needed Rondo back in here because, as you well know, when LeBron is not in the game or when LeBron needs a break from all the ball handling responsibilities, now you have a guy in Rajon Rondo that can come in, take the load off him a little bit, and run the offense as a professional, as a point guard. And that's what he did. Caruso can't do what Rondo did last night. Uh, KCP and Danny Green, don't, yeah, don't get me started on them. Well, I see Danny Green showed him a hit three. Danny, yo, good Danny for him. Green. Good for him. It's good to see him coming out and earning a little paycheck. Uh, on the on the flip side, this is all about when I look at the Lakers and how they defend Houston. I I was there was a lot of a lot of situations where I love what I was seeing. I told you this is how they should defend Houston. 
uh, don't leave the shooters and put AD on Westbrook and coax Westbrook into taking mid-range jump shots and let him take threes if you want to because he just, he just ain't an effective shooter anymore. And what do you have? You have Westbrook putting up a grand total of 10 points on four for 15. You suckered him into seven three-point shots. He made one of them and also one for three from the free throw line. So if this is how the Lakers, I would carry this over into the next game and I would maybe, maybe, maybe D'Antonio will get scared. Maybe he makes some adjustments off of this. Um, we shall see. I still think it's a long series, but ultimately the, the Lakers will be too much. And I, I disagree just a bit. I don't think, I don't think Westbrook and Harden will get really killed based off this. They could, I think what would have killed them is if they would have gotten bounced in the first round as they were very close to that happen. That would have been just a total disaster. Now this is now they lose this series. I think, I think James Harden has been hammered so much recently that I don't even think it matters so much right now. I, I just I just think it's one of those situations where I know me personally, I just I just don't expect big things from James Harden or Russell Westbrook in the playoffs at this stage. Yeah, the the narrative there is starting to shift a little bit. And like you said, if they would have lost last time, that'd have been bad. This Lakers are good, man. Like when when AD and LeBron are doing what they're doing, what do you do? I mean, and you know, I, I thought they would go a little bigger. I I you know, we talked about this last week. I was expecting more McGee, more or Howard even and really kind of walling off that paint with two bigs and not kind of getting that one big in a bad spot. But, hey, you downsize, you go with Anthony Davis, pretty much running the five. You get Morris in there. You're bigger, but you're not, like, playing gigantic. And it kind of gives you that, you know, gives you that two-way play. And it's worked. It just – it simply worked. And I think Houston is volatile enough to at least get another game or two. Like I said, I think this still goes six or seven because, I mean, we've seen Harden and Westbrook have these games where it's just, like, what do you do? Like, you know, ain't nothing you can do to stop him. Harden goes and drops 50, 40, 50, whatever. But yeah, it feels like Los Angeles has the superior matchup here. And as long as they're executing, they, they should take care of the series. 